In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you some of the basics of crocheting. Hi friends, welcome back to So Obvious. I'm Apollinar. So a friend messaged me a couple days ago asking me some questions about crocheting and knitting and it hit me that I never actually made a knitting or crocheting video on my channel. So I decided to start. Today's video is going to focus on crocheting, the basics of it, and then my next video will be the basics of knitting. I'm not going to show you everything, obviously, because there is so much to it, but if you guys are interested in learning more than just the very, very basics, I will make more videos for you. The biggest difference between knitting and crocheting is that a crocheting requires one hook to work with, where knitting requires two needles. So for today's tutorial, you are just going to need some yarn and a hook. And hopefully, by the end of the video, you will be a certified hooker. Get it? Before we get started on actually crocheting, you need to be aware that there is different sizes of yarns, and therefore there is different sizes of hooks. Um, if you're not sure which one to start with, I personally recommend starting with a worsted weight yarn, which is this one here. Um, it's the most common. You're most likely going to find, you know, hooks that will work properly for it. Whichever yarn you decide to start with, um, you can find out what kind of hook size you need by looking at the label. It tells you. For example, for this one, you would need a five millimeter or an H8 hook, which is this one right here. Um, otherwise, your loops will end up being either too tight or too loose. This one I have over here is a bulkier yarn and the size that this one uses is actually an eight millimeter or an L11 hook. Um, just for the sake of the video, I'm going to use this one because it is a little bit easier to see. Okay, so the first thing we have to do when it comes to crocheting is to make a slip knot. So to start, we are going to fold the tail end over like this. Then we are going to turn it so that it makes an X. Then I use these two fingers to go through the loop and pull on the yarn that is on the bottom. And when you pull it, it makes the slip knot. Now the reason it's called a slip knot is because if you pull it, it slips away. So let's start it again. You're gonna fold it over, make an X, pull through, and then pull it. Now, what the slip knot is if you put something in the middle of it and pull on it, whichever side you pull on, it won't slip through. Now that we have the slip knot, we're going to start making a chain. To start doing that, we are going to do a yarn over. What that means is that you are going to put, essentially put the yarn over your hook and then pull it through the chain. So now we got two stitches. So again, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. So there we've got three stitches. I'm going to do 15. Before I get too far ahead, the way I hold the yarn when I'm working with it is I put it over my pointer finger and then I put it between my ring finger and my pinky and it kind of keeps it so that it has a little bit of tension but it's not too tight so that I can keep the tension consistent and therefore the sizes of my stitches will be consistent. Okay, so now that we have our chains, we are going to actually chain one more. So I wanted to do a piece that was 15 stitches across, I chained 16 because this last stitch we're actually going to use to build height for the first row. Now, when you look at each of your stitches, as you can see, these look like V's. On the back, they just got like one um, strand in the going down the middle. So there's three strands. When we push our hook through, we are only gonna be going through this top strand. When you look at it from the top, you'll see the V's. 
when you turn it on the side, you're going to the top section of the V. So now we're going to start our single stitch. Our single stitch, we already chained one. We are now gonna be going through this first stitch here because if we go through the first stitch, then we're basically just pushing the yarn right through the hole where it just came out of and we're just undoing the stitch itself. So we are gonna go into the second stitch. We're gonna go through the top, yarn over, and pull the loop through. Now we have two loops on our hook. We're gonna do another yarn over, but this time we're gonna pull it through both loops. And that's our first stitch. So now we're gonna move on to the next stitch over here. You can tell the stitch that we just used has a little bit more open, is a little bit more open, and the rest of them aren't. So we're gonna go through, yarn over, pull it through. Now we got two loops, yarn over, pull through both. Now we got a stitch. Next one, one more time. Go through, yarn over, pull through, or yarn over again, pull through both, stitch. Go through the next stitch, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through both loops. And as you can see, we're already kind of building a little bit of height right there. So keep repeating these steps until the end of the row. So now I got to the other end of the row. Now we are getting ready to start our second row. So like at the end of the first row, remember when we had 15 stitches and we added the 16th, we're going to do the same thing. So we're gonna chain one, and now we are going to turn our work over. Now the first row is always a little bit different than the rest of the rows. As you remember, we have three strands per stitch, and in the first row, we only go through one strand. On every other strand, we are going, I mean, on every other row, we're going to go through both strands. So here's what I mean. When I go through, you can see that there is two strands right there, or the V that we saw earlier. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go through, yarn over, pull it through, and then yarn over again and pull it through both loops. So now I'm going to go again. Go into this stitch. I went through both strands of the yarn. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. And you simply repeat the process. Now we're at the end of our second row, we're going to again chain one, turn the work over, and then continue the process. What's great about crocheting is that you can actually see each row building upon the garment that you are creating. Now let's say that I've been working on this for a while, this is whatever length I want it to be. I am ready to separate this from the main skein. What we are going to do is we are going to chain one, pull it through, remove our hook, and then we simply just cut it off. Then you pull on this slightly so it's not super tight, but you want it to tighten up. And then what you would do is you take a yarn needle, thread it through here, and then just kind of work it into the loops here so that it's hidden and then you'll be done if you like today's video make sure that you like comment share subscribe and ring the bell you can also follow me on instagram on at a poly look there i post some of my upcoming projects and any videos that i'll be posting on here if you didn't like today's video then that means that you're probably more of a knitter than you are a crocheter okay bye